Hello, this is Alfredia Flowers, and I am excited. We've been reading just a few highlights from The Basics in 21 Days by Benjamin and Micah Joy Williams. And this is, you can tell the book is old. This is not my first time reading it, but I think it's good foundation. So let's start with a short prayer, and then we're going to talk about day four. We're already on day four, the basics in 21 days. Lord, we just thank you for this opportunity to come and just get a good foundation. And in Jesus' name, I pray that Holy Spirit, you would come and illuminate what needs to be fed to the to the believers, to those that are watching this now, in Jesus' name. Remember, we've already covered, uh, as we started in, we looked at day one, we talked about the voice of God, day two, the kingdom, day three, belonging, and now we're talking about the Bible. Wow. I'm going to read the first paragraph that, that uh, the Williams wrote. Why do people read the Bible? Is it really needed? If you miss this lesson, you will end up spiritually weak, easily misled into believing false ideas. The Bible is the disclosure of God's heart for humanity. Without it, it there will be no standard for truth or the reality from the perspective of God. So this gives us God's perspective. And I love that the bottom of the next paragraph says, the Bible is the standard. It's God's voice on paper. You know, we always want to hear the voice of God. And one of the ways on the um, on day one, they did talk about the Bible as one of the ways to hear God. Not the only way, but one of the, the ways. And, the, and he has given a scripture, Matthew 24, 35. Heaven, on earth, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. And I like this. I alluded to this in my prayer. Not only is the Bible the standard, but it's also spiritual food. First Corinthians chapter three, verses one and two. So just as your body needs food, your spirit man, now you got that new born again spirit, it needs to be fed. When you're new, it's milk. And then when you become a seasoned uh, believer and know how to use the word of God, in the way that it's supposed to be as, as a weapon, as a, as a tool to move you forward on your path, it becomes meat for you. The Holy Spirit has a magnificent way of helping you to get just what you need. So for some of you, it's going to be milk. And for some, you may find some meat. It's when you co combine reading with faith, belief followed by action, that the Bible's power is released. And I can remember as a, as a young believer, and I, I, well, I didn't try to really read the Bible much for many years. In fact, I just, when I first started to read the Bible, the first passage I memorized was because a little boy at church memorized the 23rd Psalm. So I thought, well, if he could do it, I could do it. So I was still a kid too. So I learned that verse. And we had to say little Bible verses when we ate our food. And those are the verses that I, basically knew I did hear verse, other verses but I didn't really try to read the Bible until I was older and I had the baptism of the Holy Spirit and I began to read it and understand and then I found a translation that I could understand because you know the Bible wasn't written in English because there was no there was no England there was no North America with um with us here speaking English so they didn't write it it's so in English. So we have to look at a translation. Some people make the mistake of reading the Bible as a static book. In other words, they think of it as a book of history that has little to do with their everyday lives. Well, I know some people have started off reading the Bible that way and got revelation from God nonetheless. So it's a powerful book. God speaks to us through the word of God. And he, he's going to give, they're going to give three principles for ways to, uh, how to get a better understanding as you read the Bible. The first 
the three things are the context, reading the Bible in the context, getting revelation, and then friends. We're going to explain that. And friends is a little tricky, so we're going to explain a little bit of more what the Williams mean. So when they say context, that it talks about the location. Where is it in context in terms of where is it in the Bible during the Bible times, like um, the culture, what was going on, who was it written to at that time, and then the how the verses, what the verses around it, the context in relation to the verses around it. That's what we mean by context. Who was it written to? The original recipient of the Bible, the original setting of the Bible. Those things help you to put it into context. And I really think it's important. Sometimes you can take a verse out of context without reading the verses around it and don't really get a true understanding of what it means. Then I love this part. So when we talk about revelation, he says, sometimes as you may read the Bible and a verse jumps out at you. And what that means, it just may stand out. Or even after you read it, you something that comes to your mind like, oh, wow, I never noticed that. Or, hmm, I want to read, find out more about that. So those are times when something just jumps out. Or sometimes for me, it's something to just stand out. And it's like I have to just be quiet because God directly speaks to me about that particular passage, what, what it means. So you may experience that as well. So that's what we call something jumping out at you. And he says, uh, the Bible becomes interactive. And he gives Hebrews chapter four, verse 12. For the word of God is alive and active. Mm, yeah, you can read the same verse different times and the Holy Spirit can illuminate something that you need for that very moment in your life. And you may not have seen it before. So. We want to make sure that we get the rev, that's called the revelation, the importance of what's relevant for that time, what's relevant for you, the relevance in the Bible. And he gives Ephesians chapter one, verse 17. Calling for the need for revelation in, in the knowledge of him. So, I'm not talking about the book in the Bible called Revelation, but rather the supernatural understanding that only God can give. That's what he says. You know, there is a book called Revelation that the revelation that God gave to John, one of the disciples, but the whole Bible has revelation in it and God can bring it to you as you need it. So he also says, he talks about Matthew chapter 16 and verse 17. He gives that. He says, as he's talking about that, he says, Jesus gave an example of receiving revelation knowledge when he told a guy that no one on earth had helped him understand that Jesus, that Jesus, who he was, who he said he was, but the father had revealed it to him. And we know that was Peter get, got a revelation directly from God. And sometimes you get revelation as you read the Bible. And sometimes having read the Bible and he, God will bring it to your mem remembrance when you're looking at something else and give you a revelation. So that's one of the things. Read the Bible to encounter God, to hear his voice. That's one of the main reasons we read the Bible. And so we're now we get into this final thing, the friends. What's up? Context and revelation is a little... But friends, I was like, mm, how does that work? Friends, he's talking about other verses that can help you get clarity. If, if there's a verse and you read it and you don't quite understand what it's about, sometimes if you read other verses dealing with the same thing, it will help you get clarity. And like, for example, the Gospels, there are four of them, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And so it's like four people give information about the same account. They're giving the information about the life of Jesus as he walked the earth. And yet they're different, but that's just like, there could be four people in one room listening to this right now, four people and pull out different things from the same message. And all of them are true, but maybe it's what, what God wants to highlight for you. So that's what we mean 
Oh, hey, my uh, Anera, it's good to see you out there. I'm not too good usually with ho hollering at Kim. It's good to see you. So we're just talking about the the uh, day four. So friend, a friend would be verses around it to help you get clarity. Uh, not necessarily just around it, but also similar verses that talk about the same concept to help you get clarity on that. And then he talked about also real natural friends, people you could trust. Like, for example, either Anera or, or Kim, they're seasoned in the word, and I could call on them if I was not quite clear or, or something just didn't resonate with me. And sometimes we just have to pray and just allow God to let some time pass before he, he begins to minister to us what it means. Sometimes at other times, God has done that with me many times. There have been situations will come up. I've asked God about a passage. And then later he gives me that understanding. So I love this last part. He gives suggests different Bibles. Like I said, I used to read King James. And I didn't understand because I don't talk in King James. But he said, the New American Standard is a good translation. You might try. The New King James Version. It, it doesn't have all those vowels and those. They kind of brought it up today. The New International Standard. The New International Version. And the English Standard Version. And I think sometimes I've, I've used the English Standard Version for clarity too. And so there are many Bible apps these days. You can just get on there and choose an app that will let you look at the different translations without having to buy 10 Bibles. Because I used to have, I used to have parallel Bibles just all before all this animated, uh, automated stuff. I used to have all kinds of Bibles. There's also something called the Bible Project, which is on uh, the internet and you can go out there and they have concepts, basic concepts or even podcasts that deal with the Bible. So there's so many things that you can do there. There are Bible, you can read along with people on, on, the, on the internet. So it's really, today is much easier to, to, to find a way to read the Bible with understanding. So the last scripture that he gives is he said, read John chapter four, steal yourself, and place yourself in John chapter four, verses five and six. Come to Jesus at the well. This is the story with him at the well. And ask him one of these two questions. How important is the Bible? Jesus, how important is the Bible? To how do I read the Bible with? So with you, how do I read the Bible with you? So one of the things that I do oftentimes before I start reading the Bible, I'll just say, come Holy Spirit and help me understand. Or even I may even um, in this case, we're asking Jesus. So you can just just ask God or you can ask the Father, would you help me to understand? So illumination will come and you can also write down things if you don't understand it. There are uh, dictionaries, there's a uh, strong concordance that has the Greek and Hebrew. Like I said, the Bible wasn't really written in English initially. So it's the Hebrew, the Aramaic, and the Greek, New Testament and Greek, Old Testament, Hebrew and Aramaic. So you can get the meaning, the original meaning words, because sometimes in this translation, the word, there may be several choices for the word. And so that will help you too. So I hope. You get ready to chew on this word. It's so good. It's so good. It's so good. It's good for you. So I just thank you. I want to just pray again. Father, I just pray that an excitement for your word will come, a hunger and thirst to know you, and that you will reveal yourself through your word to those that are listening. And we just bless them as we get as we continue on the first 21 days, the basics in 21 days. Be blessed. Love you.